Hey guys, on today's clip, I just want to run you through a very common method of investing in real estate rental property called the Burr method. Burr is spelled B-R-R-R-R. -R -R -R. It's an acronym. It stands for buy, renovate, raise rents, refinance, and repeat. It's a great method of investing that I've used um, to maximize my capital. What you want to do when you're starting off in real estate is you usually don't have a lot of capital. Maybe you do and that's great, but a lot of people don't. So you need to find a way to maximize that capital to give you the greatest amount of return possible while trying to mitigate the risk as much as possible, if that makes sense. Now I want to run, run you through just a basic scenario of how the Burr method works, okay? It's from a very overview very high level 10,000 foot or overview and I'm going to switch to the screen here screen here so let's say that we have property XYZ let's say that we can purchase that property for $70,000 that's our purchase price and then we're going to get a construction loan from the bank for $20,000 so all into this property we will be into it for $90,000 and there's usually what will happen is the bank will make you put 20% of the purchase price down and only 10% of this. So you'd be into it for $16,000. But for our sake, let's say you had to bring 20% of the $90,000 to closing or you had to bring $18,000 of your own cash to closing. That would leave you alone with the bank for $72,000. Now, let's say that the rents were $800 when you bought this $70,000 property. They're $800. You went through, you renovated the building, you know, new kitchen, paint, flooring, maybe you had to redo a bathroom, tiled the, tiled the tub, etc., etc. And after you're all said and done, you were able to raise the rent to, let's say, $1,250. Then, what you could do is you would go back to the bank and say, hey, I'd like to reappraise my property and see what it appraises for now after I've done this work. Very common practice, the appraiser will go back out, factor in all the repairs you've made, and also this increase of say 50% in rent from 800 to 1200 or 1250 in this scenario. And they might come back with a number on a house like this in my market, I'd say it would probably be pretty reasonable for them to come back at 120,000. That's what the value of the property would be. I'll put this back to 90 quick and put my 120 down here for the new appraised value. Now, this 120,000 is the new value of the property. Generally, banks will loan you up to 80% loan to value. That's what this stands for right here. Now, if I plug that into my total, it'll automatically calculate what my 80% loan to value is. It's 96000 But wait, I only have $72,000 loan balance. What that means is you've now created $24,000 in wealth or equity to be used. Uh, I should say, I should recorrect myself. You've actually created $30,000, your 90 up to 120 of equity or wealth. But the bank will allow you to pull up to 24,000. The difference between this one and this one. So if you run that quick, the difference between this cell and your loan balance of that, $24,000. So again, in our scenario, you had $18,000 invested and now you could pull up to $24,000 out. Let's say you only wanted to pull your 18 back out. You found another property uh, like kind, same thing. You want to duplicate exactly what you did. You could go to the bank now and say, hey, I have another $70,000 house. It needs 20000 of repairs. Can I have $18,000 to go do the process again? And more often than not, the bank will say yes. There's extenuating circumstances where they might say no. There's even better circumstances where they'll give you a better deal. But in general terms, this works. And you could go duplicate this process again, never having to bring more money out of your personal pocket. I hope that makes sense. And that's the power of this, right? And as you can see, as we've raised this rents, as this all works out here, 
it's now a cash flowing asset. When this was 800, it was not a cash flowing asset. So you need to be able to see the value you can add there to be able to raise these rents to make it a cash flowing asset. And this scenario always works as long as you're leapfrogging your money, this 18,000 to another cash flowing asset. And you should be able to do that into perpetuity, right? You should always be able to continually do that, moving your money, not needing to bring any more W-2 income to the table, in theory. Eventually, hopefully, you can supplement that, have different avenues to play with, but in theory, this works. I have a partner that brags about this, and it's highly incredible. He's spent, I think, I think he says $27,000 into real estate in his career, and he has a portfolio of over $3 million. And this is how he did a lot of it. He went in, fixed up a house, had it reappraised, and then was able to pull equity to go to the next one. Uh, quick side note, you always need to be pulling your money from a cash flowing asset to another cash flowing asset. The moment you make a mistake and pull from a, a cash flowing asset to another non-cash flowing asset, the game is gonna pretty much be over because that property won't appraise out. So you need to be very careful and be very calculated on the assets you do purchase, okay? So let me run through that again because I don't think I did a good job just while I was going through it, but burr, B, buy, we buy the property, right? The first R, renovate. We go in, we do all the work, $20,000 worth of work to the house. That's pretty extensive work. Raise rents. We are now able to raise rents. We've increased the value of the space, the living space. People will pay more for nicer fixtures, etc., etc. We then go to the bank. We have it reappraised so we can refinance, take some money out. The $18,000 that in this scenario we put in, we can pull back into our pocket to use to purchase the next deal as the 20% down. And we repeat the process. It's a very simple process on the surface. Thousands of investors use this exact same process and it's a very powerful process that you should have in your arsenal. It's not one I use all the time. Uh, I've pulled equity before. A lot of times what I like to do is go in and do this exact same thing. I go in, I buy, I renovate, and I raise rents, and that's it. And then I sit because the cash flow's there. If I ever need the equity to pull, that's great. I can pull it. But a lot of times I like to just sit on that cash flowing asset until another better one comes along, if that makes sense. But this is an incredibly powerful vehicle, guys, that can allow you with very little money to leapfrog and scale relatively quickly. There's, I should say, uh, make a segue that there's usually a holding period with a bank. The quickest amount of time you can usually pull equity, I think I've seen is like six to nine months. A lot of banks like to see you hold the asset, stabilize the asset for about a year before you can pull equity. So that should be noted. It's not like you can do this month after month after month. This process takes time, right? Buying, renovating should take a month, maybe a month and a half. Finding renters, another month. Then the bank likes to see a little bit of a track record that yes, this is market rents. Then it takes a little bit to order the appraisal, find another investment. The whole process will probably take a year or so. So be cognizant of that. It's not like you can buy 12 houses in a year with this method, but it should allow you to buy a house a year with the same money you have originally invested as long as you're smart and leapfrog that money. That is incredibly powerful. $18,000 can live into perpetuity, right? Let me run through a scenario. That $18,000, now we're, we use that to buy house number two. Let's say we do it one more time to house number three in three years. Well, as just natural debt pay down happens, right? And you have these three assets. Let's say that they're on a 20 year amortization and five years go by and you haven't leapfrogged anymore. The natural debt pay down of them will go down 20% just naturally because of the mortgage payments. So in three or eight years after your original, and I'm making this very simple, right? The first house would actually be going down seven years and the second one six. But let's say you're five years into the mortgages of all of them. Well, you've already created the equity. You don't have to go renovate just by debt pay down. You can go to the bank and say, hey, I want to pull equity at the 20% and then go buy three more houses. So in year eight, you have six houses. 
And now you can, let's do that one more time. Let's say that five years go by and they're all paid down another 20% as they will be. And you have six houses. Now you can go to 12. Five more years, you could go to 24. Now, this leaves you at a very high loan to value. I don't ne necessarily recommend that, but in theory, that's absolutely true. 20, 25 years from now, I don't know, it keeps doubling. You can figure out how you can have a lot of properties. For no money out of your pocket, this original 18 grand is all you'd have, but it's important to get the ball rolling, to get things working in your favor, to get assets um, of horizontal income under your belt, right? Stop working on this vertical income of just your W-2. Figure out how to get multiple income streams. That's the key to financial independence, guys. Thanks.